Thanks for joining us for another episode of Cannabis Tech Talks, brought to you by PolyScience and Summit Research. This is Patricia Miller, Managing Editor with Cannabis and Tech Today. So I'm sitting down with two super awesome dudes. Uh, we are going to be talking about cultivation. Uh, these are the co-founders of Ram's Head Cannabis, an Oklahoma-based grow. We're with Jarrell Decker and Richard Yarber, co-founders. Um, so I'm excited to, to dive into the grow. Um, of course, Jarrell, you've got a background in the music industry, Hollywood Undead, you toured this year. And Richard, you are doing the tech stuff at The Grow, helping with the cultivation. Yes, so I'm excited to kind of dive into not only the challenges of like the Oklahoma marketplace, right? But we'll focus on a lot of the tech that you're using in your grow um, and sort of the innovations that are happening in that space. So yes. thanks for being here with us. Thanks for having us. Yeah. I think you mistook uh, awesome guys with handsome guys. I said to correct you real quick. Uh, that's what I was thinking. Okay. But I thought maybe I should okay. should uh, save that for our audience to decide. Okay. <laughs> On a scale of one to ten. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, your, your lovely publicist, Lulu, she's been keeping me up to date with, with what you guys are doing. And she mentioned that you're using some new technology in your grow. Tell me about uh, the cultivation space. What's it look like for you guys? So if you're not staying up on like technology with cannabis, especially on like a commercial you know, factor, you're, you're falling behind because you know, we spent $50,000 on like sensors. You know, it's called, the company's called Arroya. And you measure like your water content, your EC, which is your food strength, and it's uh, TDS, like total dissolved solids. So you're measuring all that inside your grow medium, and then you can make like calculated decisions on how to feed the next day. So when I started growing 10 years ago, like you'd have to walk in and like, if you really wanted to be good, you'd have to go pick up every plant, it needs this much water, that much water. And you're kind of like, there's certain methods that I developed over the years that were very like uh, black market methods, like because technology for one wasn't there, or it was too expensive or we didn't know how to use it. So yeah. it was just became a thing that like, once this technology came available, I was ready to embrace it. I was like, this sounds amazing. I've been trying to learn more about cannabis, but like it was such a taboo subject that there was no information on it out there. Like these these conventions didn't exist or if they did, they were very like, you know, not what they are today. The, the online community was all forums. It was not like, there's no social media. My own friends wouldn't even share information with me. I was like, hey, I wanna come learn. I'll work for free, just let me learn. And they're like, I can't show you where my building is. I was like, dude, we're like really good friends. He's like, yeah, but like, I don't know. He's like, someone could follow you. You might have a, a beef with someone. Wow. And then he's like, it was so hard to learn this stuff. So now there's new technology. I welcome it with open arms. Are you seeing that as well? A lot of innovation in the space? Yes, a lot. Especially this week here, we're seeing a lot of stuff, a lot of new stuff. Yeah, MJ Biz is a cool place to, to see what's happening with other growers, to see you know, lighting technology innovations. But I think something that I always get excited about is the automation part of it, using yeah. sensors um, to kind of streamline it. It yeah. doesn't necessarily mean you're taking away jobs, but it does mean you can be a lot more accurate and efficient, right? Yeah, it's, so when I designed our facility originally, it's uh, now it's what, like 12,000 square feet? Yeah. Originally designed it, I did like, they're called batch tanks at every room because that's how I grew forever. You make your nutrients and every room has its own tank and pump. So Richard actually uh, built a fertigation system. It's a doser system that a lot of big grows have where it's like daisy chain and feed in because he comes from like an engineering type background. You know, he like developed a patent on a storm shelter door that like folds and he like created that, you know? And so he like, his brain works like that. So he built a fertigation system. I'm like, I've never done that. I know how to like build like black market grows. So like he comes in on the other side and like, he's like, no, no, like we're gonna make this the best grow there is. So him and I work well together in that sense. I'm like, I know how to make it work but I don't know how to build a fertigation system. I don't know how to put up like, you know, the uh, PVC panels and stuff like that. So him and I like work well together like that. And so Rams had launched, um, I guess, officially just earlier this year. Is that right? Uh, yeah, we've been, yeah, probably the, the brand itself. We've been through so many speed bumps and setbacks. So yeah. probably, yeah. Well, so I know the Oklahoma marketplace uh, is, is awesome in many ways, right? But, but also challenging. So there's a lot of growers in the space. What have you done with Ram's Head to sort of set yourselves apart? I think now we've we've definitely done, metrics came into place in Oklahoma now. So it started with about 12,000, a little over 12,000 growers. It's jumped down to about 7,000 now. Okay. It should go down like another 25, 40% because of metric. You can't just bring anybody in anymore and we have to seed to sell, we have to tag everything. 
so no one can come in and sell nothing. Can't go to Spencer and buy it for cheap. So they're starting to be like LA and cracking down on stuff, getting all the black market grows out of there. So it's good for us because it'll not make a legitimate business out of it and everything's sold correctly. So and I feel like yeah. one of the things that sets us apart is like, we're like all money in type dudes. Like, you know, it's been four years and I haven't like made a dollar profit yet. And like, I'm fine with that because I'm, I'm interested in the long haul. It's like him and I were like owners and operators. We run the business on a daily basis. Like even when we're not there, we're checking all the sensors on our phones. We're communicating with the employees. We're lining up sales. Like we like oversee every aspect of the business. Like if I got nothing to do and I'm at the facility, I'll just start, the dudes are sweeping the floor. I'll start sweeping the floor with them. Like, like nothing's, nothing's below me at all. Cause that's how I started. So we just put everything back into it to build the brand. And like, we got to pay for packaging. I'm like, well, I would like to take a salary, but I can't have packaging and a salary. Let's get packaging done for the brand. So most people are just like trying to turn and burn, you know, cannabis. Like I'm trying to like build like a legacy in, in the end, you know? I have such respect for that. And I think a lot of our listeners are going to relate to that aspect is like, you want to pull a salary, you need to be able to to get your investment out, but putting in that groundwork to lay a strong foundation yeah. is, is crucial. Yeah, like any business, you could build a house of cars and you know steal from yourself or borrow money that's not really there, but him and I come from like business backgrounds. We both ran like successful businesses. My, my band is a business and at the end of the day. So we both come from business backgrounds. We understand how it goes. Like, you know, I, I was a musician for free for like eight years before I started getting paid. So like, I understand what it takes and like, most cannabis people are not in this industry for that, you know. I appreciate that enough. We're fighting the market a lot, but that's our goal. Recreational is on the ballot in March for Oklahoma. So if that hits, that was our goal to reach that. And then we've, you know, d prices will double or quadruple. So then we've made it where we needed to be. Yes. So it's worth the fight, yeah. worth the worth the hard work. For sure. Yeah, and I, don't get me wrong. I'm not hating on the, all the trappers and all those dudes out there because that's how I started. All my friends still do that stuff. So it's not like I'm on, I never like drew a line in the sand. Like this is where I am. I'm like, I just know my journey is different from most people's. I'm not putting like anybody else down. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Well, are you, I know you're looking forward to recreation. Have you got, um, you know, other inter innovations or, or projects maybe in the future that, that you're stoked about looking forward to? Well, we, we want to get into our own extracting eventually. You know, we work with some great guys right now and they're not doing anything wrong, but it's like, what do you do as a, as a business, as a person, as an individual, you want to progress and naturally learn and keep getting better. Like once we master our craft, what's the next step? You know, like I want to start learning, like processing, like I come from a music background of mixing and recording music. It's very technical frequencies, EQs, and I love that stuff. So like seeing something technical, like I want to understand how it works. So when I see processing, I'm like, I don't know what that is. I want to, I want to get it. You know what I mean? But I would say like, there's only so much you can do in cannabis. You know, there's a lot of snake oil in this industry where people are like, this will boost your THC by 50% and cure your buds in two days. And, mm -hmm. and I'm like, I don't, I'm not buying it. You know what I mean? Like, so I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to do anything like that. I'm just trying to learn what's already there. I appreciate that. I yeah. think you got to take, take it all with a grain of salt, right? Like there is a lot of innovation and that's, yeah. that's the focus of cannabis and tech today is we talk about innovators, but sometimes we'll talk about a company six months later, they're gone Yeah. because yeah. you know, maybe they had a good idea or maybe they were, they were great at spinning the yarn, yeah. but it's not something they could put the foundations under. It's also like the industry and the, it's also not ready for a lot of stuff. So I got a friend in Tulsa. He like, he's a very smart dude. He's a, had a lot of companies and he created like this t box and technology. It'll like suck the moisture out and bring out THC and then dry and flash dry it. Okay. And he's like, it could turn a bud to like literally like 30 something percent THC, like the worst weed. And I was like, that's an amazing idea, but the world's not ready for that. So you could have the best idea. You could be an inventor, but the world isn't ready. I'm sure like for so many inventions that people made that the world wasn't ready for, you know what I mean? That's a killer point. It's funny you mentioned that. I talked with someone last night who had invested in dab tabs. Yeah. I'm not sure if you guys saw those, but they're like little ceramic tabs that you fill with uh, concentrate. And then it gives you like a, you know, single or double dose. Yeah. You don't have to mess with the wax essentially. Yeah. And it's cool, right? I mean, okay. I thought it made it more approachable. But I think in Colorado, at least, it didn't really take off mm -hmm. because I just don't think people were ready for it yet. Yeah. So I'm sure that happens more often than we realize. And it sucks. I've seen some stuff. I'm like, that's an amazing idea. Why didn't I think of that? But there's so many bumps in like the road that anything could happen and you know, kill a good idea. You know, like before refrigeration was invented, 
it's like that was such a process and like it got pushed back it's like it doesn't mean that like what's changed the human race was the fact that you could refrigerate food and people could move further away from cities and stuff like that but that took forever to get there like something happened along the way like it could have been delayed by 20 30 years you know what i mean then the human race would have been this big still yeah so okay. you don't you don't know like i hate seeing good ideas that like don't take off because like i'm a fan of like uh people who invent stuff like richard so I like to see people do well with that stuff. And sometimes the world's not ready for it, and a lot in cannabis. Yeah, absolutely. And if you're an inventor, are you seeing some of that in your own uh, spheres, people, friends, people you talk to? Yeah, we. I mean, we see it every day, too. Even we, me and him see an idea, we're like, wow, we should make this work, or what about, or how to build this, how to build that. Our minds are just, our minds never stop. What's next, what to, what can help us do better, what can make the grow work faster and less labor it's just like we're always trying to invent something new and it's cool most it's inventors fun. they're like black sheep yeah like we don't have the most savory backgrounds and he didn't get accepted to like a program where he could learn cad and it's a software he designed stuff he taught it to himself and developed a patent that did insanely well so it's like it's like uh i love inventor like nikola tesla was a black sheep like i love people like that i think it's amazing i do too i have such respect for it and for the engineering mentality I think it's um, it's like a rare, valuable part of the human race that, like, thank God they developed that part of their brain and, and evolved yeah. that way. Because um, writer types like myself, it's like a mystery and an enigma to see engineers at work. Yeah. So mad respect for that. Yeah. 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 I mean, they say they took Albert Einstein's brain and, like, they said it was like the tissue was supposedly of a young man, even though he was very old. And I don't know if that's true or not, but they were like, his brain tissue is super healthy. Cool. And they say we're like two Einsteins away from being like a different type of civilization, you know, like a self-sustaining human race. Like we need like two more Teslas or two more Einsteins in our life or in our civilization to like be a self-sustaining race, supposedly. Right on. Yeah. Well, hopefully they're out there listening to this right now and feeling encouraged. <laughs> yeah. So that little kid in Serbia, get to work. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, uh, I guess we'll we'll sort of wrap it up. Do you have any uh, parting thoughts for our listeners out there? Um, I love you guys. I hope you enjoy our product if you ever try it. Uh, if it ever goes federal legal, I hope that it gets closer to you. I love that. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks for sitting yeah. down with me. I think uh, I learned a lot. I know our listeners did too. Um, until uh, next time out there, thanks for, for watching Cannabis Tech Talks brought to you by PolyScience and Summit Research. Uh, I'm Patricia Miller, Managing Editor with Cannabis and Tech. And uh, I really appreciate you guys sitting down to chat with us. Thanks for having us. Can, I do, the, having can us. I do the slow pan at the camera now? Yeah, do the slow. <laughs> they told me not to look at the cameras, and I'm going to do it anyways. Like, <laughs> Stay elevated. I'm going to look at all of them. <laughs> all right. Thank you for having thank us. You. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Hey, hello. I'm Tommy Chong from Cheech and Chong. Wait, you didn't think people would know who I am? Durachill. Uh, this is Durachill. This is Durachill. This is Durachill. No. Hey, I don't talk like that. You want me to sell this? Buy it. Try Durachill or else. If you want something really nice in your laboratory, buy Durachill. You can't go wrong.